Town Council, Monday, July the 18th, 2016, at 9 a.m. in Council Chambers. So we do not have any introduction of late items. Thank you. Then could we have a, um, a motion, please, to accept the Committee of the Whole Agenda? Thank you. That would be Rhodes Youngberg. All in favor? Thank you. Um, delegations. Um, we're very pleased this morning to have uh, Stephanie Hall, who's the CEO of the Okanagan Regional Library, and I think she's here to give us our yearly update. So welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Your Worship and members of Council. I'm delighted to be here with you today, and I understand you have three meetings today, so I'll try to keep it Four. brief. Four. <laughs> Four, yes. Well, why not throw in another one? Um, so I'll try to keep it brief. So we'll talk a little bit about what's happening in your branch, what the usership is in Asuyus, what's new with us in the Okanagan Regional Library, and then we'll have time for questions if you have any. So in 2015, you had about 3,400 users, about 65,000 physical items circulated, and I'm sorry, I don't have numbers on your electronic item usage. Uh, 2,300 people attended programs and there was uh, quite a bit of uh, number of visits to the branch. Um, and wireless internet sessions, you had over 20,000. So that's obviously um, peak visitors and local people probably all using that. Um, we find that often the pickers like to use it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, been quite popular this last year. <coughs> So why do we care about that? Well, um, public libraries build readers. That's what we do. That's our biggest push. Um, and pediatric associations from the U.S. and Canada have issued formal states on statements on the benefits of that. And I'm sure I don't have to tell all of you about why that's important. But we do know that kids who get um, pre-reading experience by being read to in the home come into school with a huge advantage. And um, so you can track that through in kindergarten, grade one, and all the way through to grade three. And if by grade three they haven't had you know, that leg up in terms of reading, it's very hard for them to catch up. So it's great to have those early interventions with families and kids themselves. So last year we helped over 3,400 people connect with reading. So that was good in those days. So when we track people through to their adult years, we know that reading is also still associated with higher levels of employment and higher earnings. Um, it's associated with better health and also more volunteerism, which we were just talking about the importance of volunteerism. So um, it's good to see that. And then of course, on the converse side, we do see that um, prison inmates have a much lower incidence of, of literacy. So it's just an all around healthy thing to, to do. And we also know that um, studies are coming out right now showing that reading um, slows the progress of Alzheimer's and dementia, so it's uh, got benefits all through the lifespan. Mm -hmm. So locally we're finding that uh, what we're getting more questions about is, is tech help. And so that's one of the pushes for the Okanagan Regional Library is we need to help our staff keep up with that. It's actually, um, it's, it's an endless uh, demand we find so we're, we're having to kind of retool our organization to try to keep up we also find the demand for learning experiences so programs and so on is ex is uh, exponentially increasing so um, adult attendance across our whole region attended last year uh, doubled last year um, and in the Asuyas branch I'm hearing from staff that there's more demand for family reading space and uh, group study space so is interesting. Locally, some different uh, programs that have been happening or will happen in 2016, I'm talking about. Um, Georgia Brielle is your new librarian, and she's really loving uh, being in Asuyas and starting to make some community con connections. She's been visiting Rotary and various uh, fairs and so on. And of course, some reading club is underway at this point, so if you have any kids or grandchildren that might be interested. It's really a beneficial way to keep their skills up over the summer so that when they come back into school, they don't have that lag that uh, they have to make up. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what's new with us? We uh, just completed our strategic plan. Um, 
And Carol Youngberg took one for the team. That was a grueling multi-meeting process to get that strategic plan, so thank you for that. Uh, I think we got a really good um, plan out of it that's a workable plan, a very simple, which helps us focus. So we did some, we surveyed the entire region. We had over 1,100 responses from public. And then we did some working sessions with staff and the board and also some community consultations. And I guess the closest one to here would be in Carameas. And we had over 70 people coming out because they were angry that maybe library service might be cut. So it was quite a, quite a lively meeting. Um, we can continue on. So the four themes are about um, talking about our learning role, which as I say, we've always had a literacy role, but it's expanding to more learning activities and people are wanting to come into the library to get support in all the different ways that they're um, learning <coughs> and they're also we're also looking at supporting creative people and entrepreneurs a little bit more what can we do to to bring people's voices out into the into the community uh, we want to be more uh, connected to communities so we want to understand your planning cycle and your priorities um, and so that's one of my to do's this year is to get a sense of when all your planning happens and whether there's a part for the library to just be there when it's, if it's OCP or whatever is happening, can we get a little more connected so we know that we're really meeting your, your, your agenda? Um, we're trying to revitalize a lot of our branches. I think the Asuyus branch is actually quite beautiful, so I'm not sure that it's on the slate for, for changing, but one of the things that we are doing in some branches is moving our shelving to become flexible so we can just move it out of the way and do a little bit more with programming uh, when needed. And then the fourth one, again, is about our staff, just helping them come up to speed on all the different types of roles that they're going to have to play now, which aren't the same as they were in the past. We have some new services. So we have streaming movies. If you're heading off to Mexico or somewhere and need to learn Spanish, we have Rosetta Stone available for free. Um, I thought that being political people, you might be interested in Press Reader, which has like same-day uh, newspapers like Globe and Mail, National Post, and so on. And then uh, lynda.com I thought might be interested, might be of interest to your staff because it's a professional learning service where um, professionally produced videos will help you move along in a graduated way on a whole variety of topics. It might be photography, it might be how to learn MS projects. So it's a free, uh, free item that for, if your HR manager was here, I'd be trying to sell it to them. You know, that, that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great way to train staff for very little money. So any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. We'll all have to take a turn. Carol? Okay. Thanks, Stephanie, for taking your time and coming down here to see us. Um, it's much, pre much appreciated since we hear from the head, uh, head um, ruler of the ORL. <laughs> <laughs> um, what increase have you seen in our attendance um, over 2014? I'm I just think it interested. Was relatively because stable. I didn't it? bring the 2014 numbers, but I don't think it was just off the top of your head. I think it was stable. Yeah. Okay. I can, We're just I can interested. email that to you too as well. Yeah. So, I interested mean, program in attendance has increased, mm -hmm. but I think actual visits through the door are pretty stable. And across the ORL, physical visits are down. Like I've got a trend. Um, after the questions, I didn't know how interested you were in the overall picture, but. Uh, in-person visits were down to two percent across the ORL, mm -hmm. and then web visits were up about twenty percent. So it's we're seeing some shifting to electronic services. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think thanks to Georgia, that's been a real, uh, real asset from our point of view for this library. There's been a lot, a lot of technology used out of the uh, library. Oh, great! Yeah, and I think she's been a great promoter of it. Councilor Rose. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Uh, well, thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate you coming down. And uh, um, I do have a couple of questions, but I wanted to comment on the electronic services that you're kind of embracing over the last little while. Um, one of the, the negative byproducts of that, of course, is when it's available online, people don't visit the physical um, uh, branch. And, and but I'm wondering about one of your statistics, uh, the branch visits, the 43,542 visits. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering how that's compiled, and, and it seems uh, very, very high to me. I, 
I can't do the math because I don't know. I'm not even sure whether the library is open seven days a week or not. But you know, it would be. He doesn't have a library card. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you, Mayor McCord. You've the, said that before. I'll put that. I'll put that on my list of things to get even with in the future. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm not challenging it. I'm wondering how it's compiled. How it's compiled. And it does seem extraordinarily high to me. It would be up in the couple of hundred day per day. Um, so yeah. I'm just wondering if you could explain that for me. So how we compile it is we have a door counter, essentially. So we capture those statistics from our door counters. Um, and we divide it in half, you know, like we know that you've gone in. Hopefully you've come back out. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think what it is is that... Has it ever happened that you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in some libraries in Toronto, there was... a. A, li a library where it was a science library and staff would come into the staff mor room in the morning and they could smell bacon and they would think, oh. <laughs> and then there was a dozen eggs in the fridge <laughs> and somebody had found a, an unused storeroom and was had a Living great there. little Toronto apartment in the, in the library. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, people do attend the library pretty regularly, so they sometimes they're just coming in quickly to pick up their holds and leave. So if you look at the number of physical items circulated, 65,000 divided by 3,000 active users. Now I'm going to test myself on. <laughs> but so each one is borrowing, let's say, about 20 items a year. So some are coming in infrequently a couple times a year, and some are coming in every day or weekly or so on. So it, it's those people tracking back and forth. Uh, and we also get a fair number of tourists that do come through. <coughs> so they kind of bulk up the numbers as well sometimes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And yeah, children, that, you know, yeah. 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 Like uh, classrooms from the school. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that will increase it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, Stephanie, I just wondered, wanted to tell you that one of the things that um, I think it's the Communities for Kids is doing down here is putting in some little portable libraries, like down at the near the Splash Park and that's so on. Cool. And I think that's a really, a really good idea, and yeah. it's a way for. Just people to think that much further. Okay, yeah, I got to go to the library. I've got to get, you know, do that. So that's a good thing. We're, we're also having a Friends of the Library book sale this weekend, which raises, I think, something like fifteen hundred dollars for the last couple of years to buy certain things like shelving units for um, borrowing books for, you know, that type of thing in the library. And those are extras, aren't they? That's not comes out of the library budget. You're right, yeah. Your Worship. And uh, also uh, support for things like uh, summer reading programs yes. and so on, because the ORL's budget for those is usually quite lean, so friends group off and support, you know, having a snack or prizes or something a little bit more fun or an entertainer to come. So, sure. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And the other thing is um, <clears throat> this... In, in this community, uh, we had the threat of losing our high school. And uh, fortunately, we, um, that has been um, put off, we hope indefinitely, but um, at least for two years. One of the things that we were looking at and we had asked the school board to consider was um, sharing of library services. In other words, the, our Okanagan Regional Libraries in the community center, right next door is the elementary school. Both have libraries, and I know that they use them interchangeably, but it was um, a thought that we had that possibly they could be combined. Do you know anything about that? Has it happened anywhere else in your jurisdiction? Um, currently, that's not happening in the Okanagan. I have previously worked in another regional library where we did have some co-located libraries. Um, it's really great for students to have a library right in the school because um, there's actually yeah. been a fair amount of research on, on the help that that gives them and the, the uh, academic advantages of that. Mm -hmm. But of course, we'd always be open to talking to the school board if they had such an idea. You know, we're, um, we try to be responsive to what the communities are needing. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you have a different mandate. I mean, I think Osuyus is a smaller town, so it's not so um, so different. But you know, we serve all different types of people, and often in a school, you're trying to control it to some degree. Who sure. can come in, and um, and the location is important. Often, I mean, in our case, we're right next door to that school, so that's not a consideration. But sometimes schools will be off the beaten path, and the library likes to be on Main Street, kind of thing. Sure. 
So it, it can be done. It's uh, not, it's never just as simple as it seems, but oh. it certainly has, I've worked in places where it has been done. And Good. Yeah. Okay. No, it's just something to think of for the future. Seems to me when you're trying to, um, it, it's quite costly to run both, and uh, it may be that in the future you might need to do some combining of services like that. Um, and, and I'm a trained librarian, school librarian, so I'm very much, I do have a library card. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Is there anyone else that, so thank you very much, Steph. Oh, I'm now, sorry. Well, no, now I'm concerned you're just going to let everybody know that I don't have one either. But, <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually, I'm good. Um, <laughs> I'll, Your Worship, uh, if I can just add one sure. thing. Sure. The last time I visited you, we had done a review of the finances of the Okanagan Regional Library and compared every jurisdiction to see if we had more money coming mm -hmm. in than going out or vice versa. And in your case, the last time I visited you, you were slightly underserved. You were putting in a bit more money than you were getting out in services. And that has now um, evened out and you're getting, a, I think it's just like 1% more than you're paying for. So I just thought that might be good to know. You <laughs> we had an increase in rent and it just kind of pushed us over the, the threshold there. So you're now uh, right spot on. You're probably the closest one in the region. So yeah. Well, and we appreciate, um, we appreciate having Carol take that uh, back to the, um, uh, to the Okanagan Regional Library and um, and advocate on our behalf and we definitely appreciate it and um, we will try and get a hundred percent participation from council at uh, at library events thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much Stephanie so we will um, this um, presentation will be received for information and um, there is nothing else on. Could we have a move to, uh, to um, adjourn the meeting, please? Thank you. Campbell Rhodes, all in favor. Thank you very much. So we'll just have a